Justin Franson here with the legend Dr. Howard Cohn at the Cohn Health Institute. You guys, this is the place to come for health and then also healing your body. So Dr. Cohn works with so many athletes, all different sports as well, is not just treating patients uh, for health challenges, but we're gonna talk about lower body. What is the first thing that you go to to look for in the low body when you're treating your patients? Well, Justin, we gotta look at them standing, seated, supine, look at them in all the different ranges, and also wanna look at them in whatever they're given sport or modality that they're, they're doing uh, is. So like, for example, we can look at somebody uh, that plays ice hockey, um, but their whole pattern about their body is gonna be completely different when they're on skates versus when they're off skates. So we'll actually have them bring in their skates, put on their skates, and we'll test them with their skates on, because as you know, it's a different proprioceptive reality than when you're in a shoe or a sneaker or barefoot, barefoot or if you're in, you know, on skates. Same thing with someone who's soccer or football, they're, they're wearing their actual shoe or cleat. Um, so in baseball, the same thing. So when we're starting from the ground up, we wanna see what their posture is with, you know, those shoes, those socks, versus what's going on with uh, uh, when they're actually wearing their equipment too. And sometimes we will, equip them so for example you'll find patterns in people even down to their 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 feet their ankles their knees their hips their pelvis their pubic bone everything their ilium uh based on how they are just standing how they are uh when they're actually uh, wearing their skate or their shoe or their cleat and then again when they're fully suited up because anything could cause anything in the human body and everything's connected so we'll see patterns in people's feet that won't show up when they're wearing their helmet because of a cranial bone imbalance or cranial nerve imbalance, which no one's really gonna see that unless you're looking for that. So the other thing too, is we really do need to see that foundation. We're gonna check them, usually when they're seated because it's the most simple, but we'll check them when they're standing. If there's dynamics change, then we know certain things are going on. We wanna, because you, you know, they might find a pattern when they're seated that doesn't show up when they're standing. It's gonna tell us it's more pelvis. If it's standing when not, they're not seated or things change when they're standing, there would be, you know, ankles, knees, you know, uh, feet, something like that. And then we're looking at um, all of it. We're looking at, uh, you know, arching their feet. We're looking at uh, how they walk. We're looking at how they run. We're looking at how they jump. We're looking at all these different things. And then we're testing how it shows up in their body mm -hmm. to, you know, kinesiologically using applied kinesiology or quantum neurology, um, aspects of neuroemotional technique. Believe it or not, you can have somebody think about being at bat. You can have somebody think about taking a shot in net if they're a goalie or uh, you know in soccer or in hockey you can have them think about uh, running you know think about all the different aspects and it'll actually change their physiology so changes the physiology changes their muscle patterns all this kind of stuff so we're looking at at all these things so good you guys this is nerve health beyond I mean that's what he dives into is is looking at gates and ranges and and every plane of the body I mean that's just Awesome, awesome. So when you're addressing the feet, I mean, the feet are some of the biggest things. What are some of the recommendations you give for your clients? I mean, are, are we looking at if someone's more, they're collapsing their arches, do you really recommend orthotics? Well, we do recommend orthotics. We don't automatically put people in orthotics. We look to try and change the function and the dynamics of their whole, uh, you know, kinematic chain uh, all the way up. Uh, as well as the strength of the muscles of their feet, as long as the alignment of the bones in their feet, all the way uh, from, again, head to toe, because everything's connected. Now, that being said, uh, once somebody has their, those, those patterns stabilized, or you see the instability constantly come back, then stabilized by either an orthotic or a lift, then we will use the lift or orthotic, and then not always forever, but for a period of time, we check as we go. So. Sometimes someone will have a certain pattern for let's say a shoulder, a hip, a knee, an ankle, where if you give them a one or two, three, four millimeter lift on one side versus the other, you can completely change that pain pattern and it's gone. Um, or you can actually wow. change how fast somebody's gonna run or how long they can run before they fatigue or how long they run before something hurts. Um, but again, it's not something we usually lead with unless they're tremendously unstable or they come in and you know they had a break when they were younger and it affected their growth plate. Nobody even told them, nobody measures, and they just think their back goes out all the time. So um, then we'll do that. Once we do that, then we're looking at different arch dynamics 
uh, what they can do proprioceptively when they, you know, stand, squat, do these different things with different types of, uh, again, lifts or uh, set patterned orthotics. And then we, we would do that then. Uh, and then sometimes you just test for them to really have a stabilizing orthotic and then we'll put them on our, you know, 3D orthotic scanner that we have and, you know, which will take a, a, a 3D blueprint of their foot. We'd send it out, it, it automatically gets sent out thanks to technology, it comes back with an exact orthotic that fits them and then we test it and then we will still tweak it a little bit once we get it kinesiologically to have it match and make sure it does improve the function like it looked like it would. So uh, my daughter's 10, her feet are collapsing a little bit. When do you start that whole process? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's cradle to grave, man. It's really, you know, you, you start as soon as you can get them in the office. So Next I mean, week. You, know, you know, there's just, I mean, it really comes down to the fact that um, you really need to see where and why it's coming from. Some people's arches really some people have genetic patterns for their, you know, just, you know, someone had flat feet, the grandma, grandpa, everybody has flat feet. Um, and then some have it aggravated by certain things. And we're going to look to see, is it really like that? Or is this that, you know, that, you know, plantar muscle, the plantar muscles are just not firing properly because of a subluxation at their L5 or their sacrum or their ilium or pubic bone or something like that, where one can fix that and that changes. And then it's vice versa as well. A lot of times you'll see those patterns and we thought it was just something local somewhere else, but it, even down to somebody's headaches coming from a, you know, subluxation in their foot or an unstable foot or the fact that how they're, they're hitting it or, you know, traditionally four to five people have their right leg in the United States, at least have their right leg shorter than their, their left. But if you let somebody walk around long enough, they'll walk themselves in a circle because of a shortened stride. So you'll see these, these common patterns, you see them in cyclists all the time, you know, so yeah. So what are, what's one exercise or thing you would do with someone to get them to jump higher? To jump higher, I mean, literally what we do is we neuro stack and, and well, what we do now is we neuro stack using uh, quantum neurology where we would actually have them jump and then we would see what blows out on them. And then we would have them jump against, let's say a resistance or we'll have them jump weighted or we'll have them jump thinking about something or we'll have them jump exposing them to a cue you know what i mean it's almost like um like any everybody's a boxer when they can you know hit a heavy bag but you know um what's the famous uh, mike tyson saying is that everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face right <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so you gotta you gotta actually have it you know they have to be in their their sport like uh, you know perfect is basketball anybody could be in the park and hit free throws all the time but when they're shaking the things in the back and this constant chatter and you're tired you're hopping and popping and this pressure and this flashing of, of bulbs and things like that, of people yelling your name yay or cursing your name from the other side, and you're trying to drown out the noise and put it in there, it's a little different. So you will simulate all kinds of things. I mean, you can you, you change somebody's trajectory just by playing like an angry crowd sound versus a happy crowd sound versus nothing crickets or have them think about something while they're doing it. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Cohn. Some great tidbits for you guys. Learn the foundation of your feet, arch support, how to little, get a little more bounce in your step. So uh, thanks for going beyond with us. All right, anytime, good stuff. Bye guys.